Knights of Colors. The Isle of Dragon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Back for another day of this. New day, new day. Light can't reach the furthest depths of the cave. It may be impossible to proceed without a torch. You don't have a torch, but you can always buy one at the item shop at Thryston. You make your exit. Thryston. Here you can push your items to restore your party's HP, cure their status ailments, and more. This is the armor. They sell weapons and armor to give your party an edge in battle. This is the item stock. They stock handy items to use on your journey. This is the game parlor. Come here to play some card games when you need a break from your travels. This is the carriage shop. For a normal feed, Starver will take you to any town you've already visited. That about sums it up. The savages are here to help you, so don't be a stranger. Welcome. One hundred gold pieces will get you wherever you're headed, the master says as you set foot in the carriage shop. You will be instantly transported to any location you've previously visited. Travel for one hundred gold pieces... Just in case. I'm probably not going to use it for a long while, but it's good to have. Well, if it isn't the head of the National Inn Association's son, the innkeeper blurts out, overcome with surprise. You've clearly been mistaken for someone else, but the innkeeper looks so excited that you dare not burst her bubble. Your room is free. Okay. Sure. Yay! Free room. It seems the sound of a flute could once often be heard coming from the doctor's house. His neighbors complained about the noise, though, and all has been quiet since. The man says you'll need a torch to explore caves. Yeah, I just realized. That. And he adds, it just so happens you can buy them at the item shop. You get the feeling he probably works for said shop. <laughs> Makes sense. The man scours his skin with a washcloth. Trying to rid himself of all odor. 
Apparently, he blames his natural musk for his unlucky love life. You catch a whiff of scent wafting off him. It is rather pungent. An idea strikes you. Maybe getting rid of the toxins within the body would get rid of the odor without, too. You hand him an antidote and he chugs it down. Does it work? As soon as he's finished, the odor completely disappears. Overjoyed, the man resolves to tell the person he likes how he feels. From his breast pocket, the man pulls out something to give you in thanks. Ooh. Oh, two. Okay. Mysteries card certified. The man says it was all thanks to you he was able to get rid of his odor and tell the person he likes how he feels. If I could help. <clears throat> now let's jump in the well. Let's jump in the well. Let me jump in the well. Apparently monsters have been mugging people along this stretch of road lately. The Ivory Order is searching for where they're stashing the stolen goods. Yeah, they definitely have been. Also, I found some stolen goods. I'm not going to tell you that, though. This is the game parlor. Come play cards, the boy at reception calls. Let's learn the basic rules over a game. Might as well play some game parlor. The goal is to use your cards to get more points than other players. You can get points by ranging your cards in sets of matching cards for consecutive strikes. Or making a set. When the game starts, each player is dealt their hand one card at a time. Numbers on them, but you can only make one 
set per turn. You can make a set, a two card set with three, or a three card set with two, three, four, whichever you set. the game. Now then, who is our winner? Coming in at number two, 17 points. Coming in at number one, with 19 points.
Good job. The boy praises you, proffering a gift in commemoration of your first win. Yeah, I just saw the secret path. It's not important. woman who fashions herself a missionary of love haughtily cries she's too beautiful and popular for her own good. <sighs> okay. That's it. Okay. How may I help you? The proprietress inquires. That be all? The yes. proprietress asks. That would be all. The woman tells you a monster stole something very valuable from her. If only someone could get it back for me, she sighs. What did it steal, you ask? Medicine, says the woman, to give my skin a lustrous glow. That's what you lost. Okay. Cypri and ombre. I, I'm sorry. Cyprian Amber has lived here for many years, conducting research on monsters. <laughs> oh, that was great. All the townsfolk affectionately call him Cypri. This guy just chose to say that all the townsfolk call him that. 
because he doesn't want to say that really complicated name every time. If anyone knows anything about the dragon, it's him. He's a veritable monster expert. Important lore person. No. You ask nothing? Cipri if he knows anything about the dragon. Why would I ask nothing? He says he'll tell you if you do him a favor. The monsters stole a precious treasure from him. If you reclaim the treasure, Cipri promises to tell you all he knows about the dragon. It seems the treasure-thieving monster makes its hideout in the western cave. That's where you'll want to head. Great, that's where I was literally about to go and go to. Sounds great. <laughs> That's literally where I was planning on going. I was gonna go whether I got a quest for it or not, so we can push for it You were surprised to find a merchant selling goods in a place like this. You decide to take a look, and the merchant welcomes you energetically. These are my unsold wares. I would be happy to sell to you for a fraction of the price, the old woman says as she lines up some medicine bottles before you. I'm closing for the day, she announces as she packs up her goods. It seems you won't be able to do any more shopping here. Cannot peer far into the distance.
stuff. Don't hold back. Some strange force keeps it barred. Upon closer examination of the door, you spot a cavity that looks like some sort of sphere should go there. Thank you. 
much.